Writing a secure smart contract is extremely difficult. It's hard to find security holes and bugs. This is where Slither can help you write more secure contracts. Slither is a tool that helps you identify potential vulnerabilities in your smart contract. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to use it and also highlight some useful features. The first thing that we'll do is install Slither. And the easiest way to install it is by using pip. So we'll copy this command and inside the terminal, we'll paste the command. Once Slither is installed, we're now ready to use it in our smart contract project. For this example, I'm using an old Truffle project called Solidity Multisig Wallet. The smart contracts that we'll be testing Slither on is the Multisig Wallet and some other contract. It doesn't really matter. The point of this video is to show how to use Slither. So inside a Truffle project, the very basic way to use Slither is to type Slither with a dot. And this tells Slither to analyze all contracts inside this current directory. Here you can notice that Slither returns some outputs with some colors. Some of the outputs are in red and some of the outputs are in green. And it lists out some potential security holes in this smart contracts. For example, here it says reentrancy in multisig wallet dot execute transaction. And if you analyze the code that the warning gave us, indeed a reentrancy is possible for this function. But here reentrancy is not a problem because the only people that get harmed from a reentrancy are the people that can call this smart contract, which is the owner of this smart contract. So as you can see, Slither lists out potential vulnerabilities in your smart contracts. So the workflow is once you type in Slither dot, it will list out some potential vulnerabilities. You will go through each error and check the code corresponding to the warnings. And make sure that the warning is not a threat to your smart contract. And if it is, then you'll have to change up the code and fix your smart contract. So that is the basic usage of Slither. So now let's say that you analyzed your code using Slither. And let's also say that you identified that these warnings do not pose any threat to your smart contract. So you decide to leave the code unchanged. And let's also say that you went inside your smart contract and changed other parts of the code. And you also decide to run Slither again. And you see the same warnings again, even though you identified that these are not actual threats to your smart contract. So wouldn't it be nice to tell Slither that you want to ignore these warnings from the next time you type in Slither? Well, you can do this by typing Slither with a dot as usual, and then passing in an extra parameter called triage. Notice that Slither is now in interactive mode and it's asking if Slither should ignore the warning from next time. I don't want to see this warning from next time, so here I'll type in all. And I'll type in all again. And you can continue this process until you go through all of the warnings. Once you've gone through all of the warnings, you'll notice here that Slither created a new file called slither.db.json. This is where all of the warnings to be ignored are stored in. So now if I come back to the terminal and then type in slither.triage again, you'll notice that slither returned zero warnings. This is because all of the potential warnings that exist are ignored. Now if you want to reset and see all of the warnings again, it is very simple. You'll just have to delete the slither.db.json and then when you run slither again you'll see all of the warnings again okay so that's how you hide warnings and reset it so that you can see all of the warnings again that covers the most useful features of slither that i use with my smart contracts there are other useful features of slither so go ahead and experiment with them i'll put a link to this command in the descriptions below other than that, thanks for watching and have a nice week.